Hi, everyone. Thank you all for joining us tonight. I'm going to wait just a moment to allow everyone to settle into the room and to connect to their audio. While we're waiting for everyone to connect to audio, please feel free to share with us in the chat where you're joining us from. Suffolk County, Louisiana, California. Wow, that's awesome. Buffalo, New York State. Awesome. Thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. Before I get started, I will go over some Zoom functions. Um, we encourage you to turn your cameras on and remain muted while our facilitators are speaking. You can access the camera and mute functions at the bottom left corner of your Zoom application. We do have closed captioning turned on. You can access this towards the bottom right corner of the Zoom screen. There should be a button that says show captions. And the chat function should be towards the middle of the bottom panel. And lastly, if you love something that one of our facilitators said, or you would like to applaud our facilitators, there is a button for reactions, and that should be right next to the show captions button. If you have any questions about Zoom, please feel free to directly chat either myself or Nell, our team member at NASW New York State, and we'll be, help, we'll be able to help you throughout the event. Tonight's event is titled The Life Cycle of Social Work Advocacy. As social workers, advocacy for legislation to improve social conditions and promote social justice is an ethical standard set for the social work profession by our code of ethics. From agenda inception to research, policy, and position writing, to grassroots campaign development, direct advocacy at the Capitol, and more, our members at NASW New York State power and lead all of our advocacy work. As social workers, Students, working professionals, and retired professionals all have the opportunity to be an advocate. If you joined us tonight searching for ways to get involved as an advocate for the social work profession, you are in the right place. Tonight, you'll have the opportunity to hear from representatives from the New York State Legislative Education Advocacy Day, also known as LEAD. You'll hear from our NASW New York State Political Action for Candidate Election Committee, Otherwise, otherwise known as PACE, and you'll hear from our NESW New York State Advocacy and Government Relations Committee, otherwise known as AGR. To wrap up the night, I will close this out by sharing some of our plans for Capital Action Day 2024. And I do just want to mention that after each presentation, we will leave a couple of minutes for questions, but there will be a larger Q&A session towards the end. So we'll begin our program by with a presentation by the New York State Legislative Education and Education and Advocacy Day LEAD. LEAD is an opportunity for social work students across New York State to advocate in support of critical issues to our profession. Our facilitator for this presentation is Alexis Candido. Alexis Candido is an MSW student at SUNY Albany. She is in her second year with a macro concentration she graduated from Union College in 2022 with a BA in Sociology and Psychology. Her, her social work interests are in legislative advocacy and nonprofit management. She has previously worked with the New York State Office for Prevention of Domestic Violence, No More, and Albany County Crime and Victim and Silent Sexual Violence Center. She is currently working at the Office of Family Children and Family Services in the Division of Youth Development and Partnerships for Success. In her professional career, she hopes to advocate for victims of domestic violence and sexual assault. Please join me in welcoming Alexis Candido to present on LEAD. Hi everyone. Olivia, are you able to share the presentation? Yes, all right. I'm really happy to be here with you guys. Just hold tight.
So again, good evening, and I want to thank Olivia for the introduction. I'm really excited to be here with you all tonight and talk to you about Legislative Education and Advocacy Day, or as it's often referred to as LEAD. Quick slide change. So what exactly is LEAD? LEAD is an opportunity for social work students from across all of New York State to advocate with government in support of issues critical to the social work profession and the communities that we serve. Many of you may not know exactly what you want to do in your professional career, as I did not for a very long time. It might be research, therapy, school social work, or nonprofit work, but regardless, much of our profession, our careers, the future of our careers, and the communities we serve is regulated by state policies. LEAD is what gives social work students a voice in legislation, which is incredibly important as we are the future of the social work profession. We change the slide. So a quick history of LEAD. For over 20 years, social work students have gathered in the New York State Capitol to advocate on key legislative issues that are important to both social work students and social work professionals. These key issues have included the racial equity assessment and legislation initiative, social work loan forgiveness, and raise the age of criminal responsibility. The pictures on this slide show social work students at LEAD in 2016, 2017, and 2019. Due to COVID, students were not able to gather in the Capitol to advocate and were forced to go online, but this past year, we were able to return to in-person advocacy. Change the slide for me. Here are some pictures of LEAD from this past year. So in March, over 60 social work students from across the state attended LEAD. Students came from Adelphi University, SUNY Buffalo, SUNY Albany, SUNY Binghamton, Toro, Damon University, and Cayuca College. The day began with student introductions and small group assignments where students were encouraged to collaborate with their peers and identify strategies on how to speak with legislators during their appointments. We headed into the Capitol for a presser where we expressed our support for the bills we were advocating for. You can see that presser is the photo on the left and it was in the million dollar staircase in the Capitol. It was a really, really moving and incredible experience. Um, we were joined at the presser by Senator Brisport, Assemblymember Burgos and Assemblymember Jackson, who each spoke with the group about the selected bills and stressed their importance and the importance of student advocacy. In the afternoon, students attended their scheduled appointments with legislators and their staff in their offices and were given the opportunity to express why these bills were so important to our group and why these legislators should give their support to these bills. The day ended with our students in the Assembly and Senate chambers with an introduction and acknowledgement of Legislative Education and Advocacy Day, which was also really cool to be in Senate and Assembly chambers. You want to give a quick slide change? The selected bills last year were the Family Miranda Rights Act and the Eliminate Predatory Court Fees Act. These bills were selected by the LEAD Planning Committee, which is made up of students and key stakeholders in legislation. The Family Miranda Rights Act requires workers to advise parents and caretakers of their rights at the start of an investigation, and the Eliminate Predatory Court Fees Act would eliminate mandatory court surcharges, parole and probation fees, mandatory minimum fines, and end the practice of using the court system for ineffective legislation, excuse me. I know you may be a bit overwhelmed by everything so far and might be thinking, I know, you know, I really don't know that much about advocacy. I don't think that this is something I could be a part of or that I would be a good tool for. Um, but last March, I was thinking the exact same thing. Um, I was kind of thrown into this role of helping plan lead with no experience as an advocate or really even in my social work career. As you might remember, I'm a social work student myself. I came straight from my bachelor's program into the MSW program and just haven't really had any experience. However, if you remember anything or take anything away from this presentation, it's that LEAD is a day that's intended for the learning and growth for social work students. You're able to practice skills that you've been learning throughout the entirety of your program, like professional communication, critical thinking, organization, and empathy. And to help you harness these skills for LEAD, we provide students with a myriad of resources before and during the event to ensure that they are supported and feel confident. Quick slide change. 
Before the event, students are sent a virtual folder, including briefs of the bills that we will support, we will be supporting, resources that they can read and watch on student advocacy, and important information to know for the day of the event. We also held an information session for attendees discussing the selected bills with time for student Q&A. The morning of the event, student groups are assigned a liaison, either from the lead planning committee or a faculty member from a visiting university to support and guide students throughout the day. These liaisons assist students in staying on track with their agendas and appointments and can assist students in formulating strategies for talking with legislators. Next slide. So obviously we have a lot to look forward to in the coming months in regard to LEAD. Um, registration will be coming out soon, hopefully by the end of October. So keep an eye out for that. And we're also hosting an event with NASW in the spring on their student series, Survive and Thrive about LEAD. And we'll have more information at that event regarding the specifics and the bills that we're supporting. Um, and on this last slide here is my contact information. If you have any questions uh, or want to talk more about LEAD, maybe some concerns you might have, please feel free to get in touch with me. This event is intended for students. Students run the event. Um, even with just suggestions, feedback is super important for this event. I really encourage you to share them with me. Um, LEAD is supposed to be really fun. It's supposed to be a learning event. The energy is really, really high. Um, and it's been one of the best parts of my student career as a social worker and I'm sure as an adult I will look back on it fondly so if you're here tell your friends about it get the word out we're coming back in 2024. Awesome thank you so much Alexis for that great presentation on LEAD. I know I was able to attend last year and it was so much fun, especially the presser, the million dollar staircase. I just love the energy that comes with standing in that room. Does anyone have any questions for Alexis about LEAD? Please feel free to put your questions in the chat or right now, if you'd like to unmute, you can do that as well. Awesome. And I just want to remind folks that um, after this presentation, any links or resources mentioned will be sent out in an email. So Alexis mentioned the lead registration link will be coming soon. Um, I will send that out via email when we have that link. Awesome. So I'm now going to pass it on to our next presentation. This presentation will be focused on our NASW mm -hmm. New York State Political Action for Candidate Election Committee. Dr. Sarah Young earned her BSW from Syracuse University, her MSW from the University of Michigan, and her PhD from the, the University of Alabama. She is proud to serve as the BSW Program Director at Binghamton University and is a macro social work practitioner with a passion for policy and community change. Dr. Young has been a social work educator since 2010. She has served as the PACE chair since July, 2022. Sarah and her class are joining us tonight. So please join me in welcoming Sarah to talk to us about our PACE committee. Thank you, Olivia, and hello everyone. Um, I am speaking to you from Binghamton University and actually from our Introduction to Social Work class. So it's my pleasure to speak a little bit about PACE, but also I'm surrounded by people who are already in week four, bringing a level of social work advocacy and energy uh, to the classroom. So Alexis, great job with that presentation. Um, a little shout out to LEAD. I remember LEAD as a social work student um, and just really felt inspired by that ability to do something together in community. So I think I've always had that uh, desire to really try to bring our profession forward and really speak to the issues that matter to our profession. So thank you, Olivia, for this opportunity to speak. Um, and a little shout out to Olivia. She'll kill me later. But, um, you know, I could not do my job as a PACE chair without my amazing committee and without Olivia's support as a liaison to uh, the NASW New York State chapter. So thank you, Olivia. Um, so I wanted to share a little bit about PACE. Um, as Olivia mentioned, PACE is the Political Advocacy for Candidate Election 
committee. It's a part of an overall agenda uh, to really make sure that social workers are showing up and advocating and electing officials that speak to not only our profession, raising the awareness of our profession, in some cases expanding services, um, expanding um, really the, uh, the pay that we're earning because we're doing such important work. But PACE also takes seriously the idea that candidates can speak to issues that social workers care passionately about. So the work of PACE, we meet roughly monthly, um, and the work really does pick up during candidate election season. Um, we ultimately make decisions about who, um, and we see ourselves as stewards of the NESW's resources. So who will we endorse as candidates? Um, and so we go through a very thorough vetting process. Basically, candidates at the local and state level will apply uh, for either an endorsement, um, a contribution to their campaign, or in many cases, both. Um, and so we thoroughly as a committee vet those candidates. The first step is typically they fill out our candidate form. Um, we are working on it for this particular year. So as soon as it's up, I'm sure that's a link that we can share, Olivia, with our guests. Uh, but what happens is we have candidates tell us a little bit about themselves. They provide us with um, their Twitter handle, their campaign platform, um, and also where they stand on particular issues. Those issues are often informed by, and Gerald will speak to AGR, but we often look to the AGR committee to help set the stage for our priorities in the legislative session. So we ask candidates where they stand on particular issues. And then we don't always, you know, we are social workers, we want to be critically conscious. So we do our homework as well. We look into the records that they may have. They've served as elected officials before. We look at their campaign materials. Um, in some cases, we reach back out to clarify where they stand on particular issues. Um, and in many cases, uh, the folks that are reaching out to the NASW are aware of our work as, a, as an organization. They're aware of social workers and the importance that social workers have in their communities. And in some cases, it's rarer than we'd like, but in some cases, they're social workers themselves or their spouse or partner is a social worker. Um, and so we do try to lift up not only people who are um, in line with social works values and visions, but in many special cases, we want to elect social workers to our legislative bodies. We want social workers at the table making these decisions. Um, we do offer, in many cases, support for campaigns. Um, and in the past year, um, I was elected chair in 2022. And one thing that we decided to do together as a group was to provide special incentives, either if someone was a first time candidate, we thought they might be deserving of a little bit of extra money, um, if they had to primary. So if they had to sort of spend extra resources to really make it to that finish line and hopefully get to Albany or whatever, um, whatever office they were seeking. Um, and then a special bonus if they themselves were a social worker. So um, we're thrilled to continue to promote uh, the work of the NASW in that way. And ultimately, as I see it, we are a bridge. I think LEAD is a place where students and the social work community can be in Albany really championing, championing legislative agenda items, really coming together and showing the power of social work, the way we can educate and inform our elected officials. I think PACE really tries to get people at the table that we believe will speak up and, and be a voice of social work values and vision and when those decisions are being made at the, at the local and state level. And then we have our partners in AGR, and Gerald will tell you more, who really carry us through and, and continue to raise awareness about issues. Um, so I think we work hand in hand. Um, we certainly want to make sure that our elected officials are speaking to those issues. Um, and PACE, I think, is one bridge uh, to really make that happen. Um, so again, we are a committee. Um, we have brought in some new voices to the PACE committee, and typically we elect new members every year. So typically in the summer before things get very busy. So that's a little bit about PACE. Um, our website, um, Olivia perhaps has already linked to, yep, it looks like the, and I, thank you, Olivia, you always read my mind. So there, there is a link in the chat to the PACE committee website. Uh, we encourage you to check it out. Um, and again, our, our candidate form um, is going to be up there shortly. What's happening is we're really looking into um, the issues that we're going to champion for this particular upcoming year um, and really building our candidate form. So one way you can join with us is if you know candidates in your hometown, in your city, um, who you think might be deserving of an endorsement, we'd love to partner with people who we can continue to reach out to um, when they're in Albany or beyond. So if you know candidates that should know about the NASW, should partner with us, we encourage you to share that candidate election form once it's ready. And in the audience might actually be people running for office.
office themselves. So if there are ways that we can support you, um, if you're if you're holding up and lifting up the importance of our profession at whatever platform or stage you're at, please reach out to PACE because again, um, we really want to make sure that we're showing up for candidates um, and lifting our profession and its importance across uh, across the state. Thank you so much, Sarah. That was very informative. If anyone has any questions about our PACE committee, please feel free to unmute or you can put your questions in the chat. I know it was a lot of information, so I'll give just a moment for folks to process and think if they have any questions about anything. All right, Sarah, looks like you did a great job at uh, presenting PACE. It looks like there's no questions. Oh, I'm sorry, I spoke too soon. Kristen put into the chat, what is the best way to contact you about candidates that should be considered for an endorsement? You can please feel free to contact myself. I'll put my email in the chat um, and I will send out the candidate endorsement form when that questionnaire is all perfected. Um, I also do just want to highlight that we will be um, revamping our donations form. Um, so PACE can't function without support from our members. So if, if you're interested in donating, we will have that link up in within the next month or so. And I'm putting my email in the chat box right now. Um, so if you have anyone who is interested, please feel free to let them know to contact me and I'll be in touch with them. If there are no other questions, I'll move forward to our Advocacy and Government Relations Committee presentation. Dr. Myers provides clinical social work services via private practice and through the organizations Black Men Heal, Better Mind, and voluntarily through, through given hour, excuse me. He is also a part-time instructor at Syracuse University School of Social Work. He is the current chair of our Advocacy and Government Relations Committee, New York State Chapter. Dr. Myers has served the chapter as an executive committee member, a program committee member, board member at large, and central division director. He is most interested in critical social work, social determinants of health and mental health, African-American men and mental health, and comparisons of Afrocentrism and Eurocentrism. Dr. Myers earned his MSW degree from Syracuse University School of Social Work and his DSW from si Simons University. Please welcome Gerald Myers. Simmons. <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought thank I pronounced it wrong. Excuse me, Simmons that, University. That's okay, that's okay. Uh, thank you, Olivia, for that great introduction. Uh, so the AGR, Advocacy and Government Relations Committee, uh, the purpose of the committee is to be uh, the social worker's voice uh, at the legislature. We get agenda items from our members. Um, we are approached by other organizations to uh, join in their initiatives. Um, we make recommendations to our board. Um, uh, the board might send us a question. Um, it's really exciting what we do. Um, when you think about, uh, you always, we always have these slogan, slogans about uh, social workers making change and being change makers. Well, this is how you do it. Um, in the past, the chapter's ad advocacy was actually uh, handled by uh, an independent consultant. We were paying someone to do this. Um, but uh, with the leadership of um, the chapter, uh, we revived re 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 yeah, revitalized um, our function, and we are um, we're doing a lot of things. It's very interesting. I won't talk about um, Capital Action Day because I know Olivia will talk about that. Um, that's really all I have. Anybody have any questions?
And I will briefly share my screen to um, show you our end of session report. So this is a brief summary of all of the, the work that AGR has supported um, through the 2023 session. This is also linked on our advocacy homepage and I just put that link into the chat box. Um, I just have to make my screen a little bit bigger so I can see. <laughs> Um, so during our 2023 session, we had 110 advocates join us in Albany for our Capital Action Day, um, which I'll get more into detail after this. We had about 1,500 emails sent for our Veterans Mental Health Training Initiative, 50 emails sent for improving insurance reforms, 196 engaged advocates through our Act Nows, and 13 signed memos of support. So that's what Gerald was mentioning, where organizations will come to us for our support. We signed on to 13 organizational letters. And the emails sent are all through our Act Nows. Um, so our Act Now is a brief link. Um, it will be auto-populated when you receive it with the message as to why we're advocating for the legislation. And then we always encourage social workers to add their own personal experience. And in a click of a button, that message will be sent to however many representatives um, that I select to target. So in a matter of a minute, we can target maybe 10 to 20 representatives. So it's a really powerful tool when used um, in numbers. And this is just an overview of our priorities from 2023. Um, so our top two priorities were to advocate for equitable social work salaries and to expand the current um, social work loan forgiveness program that's offered through the state. I'll put this link in the chat if you'd like to read more up on them. But after our Capital Action Day last year, we decided to pick up additional legislation. We picked up three pieces of bills. Um, the first one was family Miranda rights um, that Alexis mentioned, and also end predatory court fees. Those are the same legislation that LEAD was advocating for last year. And then we did decide to pick up for the mental health professionals in schools, trying to advocate for social workers in every school district. You can read more on all of the past legislation that was introduced last year. And unfortunately, some of the unpassed legislation that we were rooting for, but it just didn't get the opportunity to get passed last year. And you can just read more up on our next steps and our plans for this year. Um, so I will stop share and ask if anyone has any questions for Gerald or about AGR. I just want to add that um, I wanted to, to echo what Dr. Young said. Um, Olivia really runs everything. Um, we couldn't we couldn't do anything, you know, uh, what we do without uh, her organizing us uh, in such a way that we can be effective. So thank you, Olivia. Thank you both. Dr. Myers, we have a question from our classroom and we're gonna try to have the students speak it, but let us know if you can't hear, okay? I'm curious how students get involved in ACR or if there's like avenues for students to get involved. Could you hear the question or should I repeat it? I think I, I, think I understood um, the learner asking uh, how learners get involved in AGR. Yes, learners and yes, students. Yes, exactly. Okay, so um, on the actual website, uh, NESW New York State, if you go to governance, uh, you'll see committees and you'll see AGR. And there's a there's a, actually a form that you can fill out if you're interested. Uh, we do have students. Uh, we have former students. We have interns. Uh, we have a lot of people. Um, uh, we have people in academia. We have private practice uh, practitioners. So we have a lot of people in many different areas of uh, social work, which brings uh, a lot of different perspectives and richness to what we do. Did I answer your question? Thank you. Yes. Student is nodding yes. You probably can't see her. So. 
Yeah, I just wanted to echo um, everyone, all social workers are invited to join us on AGR, whether you're a social work student, a social work professional, or you're a retired social worker, there's room for you on our AGR committee. Any other questions? I think someone just had their hand up. Oh, Pat, I think it was you. I'm Pat. I'm not a student, but I feel in better hands having seen all those pictures of uh, of all of you advocates in the stairwell. I feel better already knowing that they're, the students are out there. My question is, as a, a member who's been around a long time, I think the various kinds of advocacy get to be confusing for people. And what I would ask those of you who are the leaders of the advocacy efforts, how do you choose, because people have such wildly different views these days, how do you choose what's the, the social work thing to be advocating for in various uh, legislative issues? What, what's your guidepost? What's your guardrail? What do you use as a, as a post to know which things should NASW uh, get behind? We fight a lot. Um, <laughs> and I think we, we, have, we have healthy arguments about things. Obviously the code of ethics uh, helps guide what we do. Some things are just, you know, so obviously social work. Um, what doesn't come up much um, is, you know, whether they're bipartisan issues. And so my philosophy is that all legislatures work for us. It doesn't matter who's in office. Their, their job is to uh, do the will of the people. And so we've got to let them know. Um, our experience has been the legislators respond to um, easily digestible charts. Um, they like numbers. They like reports. And they also like uh, faces. They like to know the names uh, behind the issue and the faces behind the issue. So yeah, that's it. You want to add anything, Olivia? Yeah, I just put into the chat um, faces and live, lived experience. I do want to highlight, you know, the statistics and everything we present to them in the graphs. That's great um, to get those ideas flowing, but really the lived experiences of the social workers in the field, the clinicians doing the work every day um, is really how we get into the hearts of the representatives. And I like to say once we have the emotional side, um, we can easily get by with uh, passing it through committees and all of that work to get it passed. Um, so I do just want to emphasize any opportunity you have to speak with your representatives or to send an email, please do so. And your experience is what they're looking for. I do also want to add on to our AGR. Um, so our members on AGR, we do a general vote for our legislative agenda, and then it, the final vote gets sent to our board of directors. Um, so if our board of directors does not approve a legislative priority, unfortunately, we can't move forward with advocating for it publicly on our social media or supporting it um, publicly as an organization. And our our New York State positions always are they independent of the National Association? Yes, and we do have elections each year for our board of directors. Um, at, we really encourage passionate members to get involved in our work and lead our work. Oh, sorry, Gerald. I think you're muted. Thank you. Um, I'm shaking my head now. Um, yes, our jobs, our, our positions in New York State are, are independent, but we are still NASW. And so there are instances where we want to do something and we have to run it up to national first and it might not go. Or national might send something uh, down to us to bring to our attention. So, um, you know, not all the time does, you know, we vote on things. Sometimes people don't get what they, you know, what they wanted, but there's many different ways to advocate. So, um, um, so yeah, there's some place for everyone.
thank you so much. Are there any other questions about our Advocacy and Government Relations Committee? I put our committee website into the chat, but I do want to highlight most of um, the information or the memos of support that we vote on through AGR are all listed on our main advocacy website. Pilar, I see your hands up. Hey everyone, I actually don't have a question. I just wanted to um, make a point. So I was part of LEAD 2021 and it was an amazing experience. Um, I just graduated in June and I'm now part of AGR. I was part of AGR last year and I'm also, now I'm part of PACE. And I can't tell you how important like all of this is. There are a lot of the policies out there either affect us directly, affect affect uh, the people who we work with. One way or another, it's all interconnected. Um, whether you think it might not be important, student loans, you know, it's all it's all important. And I was lucky enough to be able to participate in Capital Action Day last year, and again, amazing. And it's something I really highly recommend because as a for as I could have. As a former student, I was that student voice. I could say like, well, this is my lived experience as a student, and this is why I feel that social workers need to get paid more, you know? Um, so adding that student voice is so important. So don't think that just because you're a student uh, that you'll be ignored or that your voice doesn't matter because it matters a lot. Just wanted to add that. Thank you so much, Pilar. I think that was a beautiful segue into um, my discussion about Capital Action Day. So for those who are unfamiliar with the event, Capital Action Day is NESW New York State's annual advocacy event. It's a day when we can come together as social workers to advocate for the policies that will help us provide better services to our communities and ultimately better serve the profession. At Capital Action Day, you'll have a chance to talk with legislators about the issues that matter to us, and most importantly to you, social workers in the field. Last year, we advocated to expand social work loan forgiveness opportunities and address the inequities in social work salaries across the state. Capital Action Day is open to both social work students and professionals, retired and seasoned social workers, Attendees will visit legislators throughout the day via legislative appointments or through our blanket canvassing to advocate for our legislative agenda. In preparation for Capital Action Day, we will be hosting a series of informational chapter chats with prominent New York State mental health organizations um, for our members in anticip anticipation of the 2024 legislative session. The intent of this series is to inform social workers about the organization's policy priorities and determine ways that we can partner to accomplish shared legislative goals. As you just heard um, by Gerald, NESW New York State's legislative priorities are determined by our membership. So we wanna provide our members an opportunity to hear from other mental health organizations in the state in hopes of expanding our legislative agenda. So the first chat in this series will be with the Mental Health Association, the New York State chapter, and they will be joining us on September 19th to talk about their legislative agenda. We will be joined by the CEO, Glenn Liebman, and the Director of Public Policy, John Richter. They will share information about their advocacy day um, that's titled Mental Health Matters and information about how they determine their legislative agenda and their goals that we would like to work together to accomplish. The next chat in this series will be with JMAC for Families, um, Just Making a Change for Families. They will be joining us on October 25th to talk about their legislative agenda. Um, they were the key organization who led the Family Miranda Rights Act that we supported last session. So I'm sure they'll be joining us to talk more about their progress with that legislation. And then we have some to be determined dates, um, but I'm hoping to schedule in November with the National Alliance on Mental Illness, New York State chapter, um, to 
same thing, talk about their legislative agenda, inform our members about the work that they're doing, any advocacy efforts and how we can get involved. And then hopefully in November, um, in October at AGR and our board of directors will have set our legislative agenda. So sometime in November, we will host a town hall, very similar to this format, um, to inform our members about our priorities going forward for the 2024 session and some, some experience about why we chose them and our plans going forward to address the priorities. And then in December, we will be really focusing heavily on some social media campaigns around our priorities. Um, so if you see our posts on social media, please do me a favor and share that for me. Um, we want to get our word out there as early and as best as possible. Um, so that's our that's our winter lead up to Capital Action Day. Our event will be on February 13th, 2024, and it will be in Albany. I will post our Capital Action Day website, link into the chat. You can find any information about the day on this website. I also want to highlight that I have a sign up link to be informed about any updates pertaining to Capital Action Day. So I'm also going to drop this link into the chat. Um, it's an email list. So anytime that there's an announcement, you will be notified. For example, when it comes time to register, I will be sending emails to this listserv, so you'll be the first to know if you sign up through this link. And that's all of the lead up events for Capital Action Day. I don't know if anyone has any questions or any comments about the day. Olivia, we have another question from the classroom. Are you able to take that? Yes, of course. Okay. I'm curious how the representatives are selected that we interact with on the day. If it's based on like a committee that they're in or people that we think are likely to vote on the bill, but maybe on that side. Yes, absolutely. So we do target um committee members who, you know, are value our work. Um so for example, the mental health committees, um, the social services committee. And also we do have representatives who reach out to us on a regular basis. Um, so we have formed some great connections with them. For example, Senator Salazar, Senator Brooke, Chantel Jackson, she's a social worker her, herself. Um, so we have formed some pretty great connections with representatives. Um, so that's how we get involved in their work and also share the announcement about our work just through our connections and then also reaching out to folks with the similar interest in their committee membership. I hope that answered your question. Thank you. Awesome, I see Ariel has your hand up. Yes, hi, Um, uh, just a comment, basically, I just want to say it is so important for social workers to come up and utilize Capital Action Day to advocate on behalf of ourselves because we do so much advocating on behalf of our clients and our communities that sometimes I feel like we forget ourselves. And it's so important that we remember ourselves because if we're not taking care of ourselves, how can we take care of our clients? And this is a, fund a fundamental way to take care of ourselves by going straight to the politicians at their offices. There's like not a better way to do it. And also like what's great is I had the opportunity to go uh, to Capital Action Day last year, which was awesome. And, you know, they they provide activities to help strengthen uh, public speaking. And for someone like myself that does struggle with that, it was a good activity to take advantage of. And then to go speak with, you know, um, a political staff member right after, I felt pretty energized. So, you know, 
I, I, I feel like it's a very well planned event and it's, it's important to go. Thank you so much for that, Ariel. I do Absolutely. Just highlight, thank you. I do just want to comment. It is completely normal to get nervous speaking with representatives, um, but we do have to remember that they are people at the end of the day, just like you and I. Um, so we have all the power we need. We have all the information we need as social workers with lived experiences. Um, so don't be nervous and use your voice. It's our power. Antoinette, I see your hand is up. Hello. Um, so I'm a retiree social worker and I am volunteering for NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness. So I'm thrilled to hear that um, NASW is interested in partnering with uh, NAMI. Um, we, I also serve on their advocacy committee and many of the initiatives that we are um, looking at and promoting um, definitely align with NASW. Um, we're looking at incarcerated persons, their need for mental health treatment, the disparities um, in who, uh, who is arrested, who is incarcerated, who served longer sentences, the need for mental health treatment within the prison and jail systems, as well as um, the need for substance um, treatment prior to release. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a number of issues there. We're looking at the need to increase rural mental health services um, and access in rural communities and counties in New York State, and also looking at the hospitalization, um, psych hospitalization, the need for increased beds for adolescents, and um, improving conditions in the CPEP, which is the um, Comprehensive Psychiatric Emergency mm -hmm. um, Assessment Programs. And there's been a lot of criticisms um, definitely here in Buffalo, but also statewide about staffing and funding for that. So I'm thrilled and I hope to see somebody from NAMI in November. Thank you for all your work. Thank you so much, Antoinette. Thank you for sharing that. I'm sure we will um, partner on numerous of those priorities as they do definitely align with our profession and the members that we serve. I did want to add one, a couple of things. Um, it seems like we're we're always talking about issues that are a problem, um, but we know where some of these problems come from. And so it's also important to advocate on the other side. Um, the social determinants of health uh, we know about, we should be advocating about. And I think we can talk to politicians about money. They're interested in money. We know that primary care is much cheaper than an emergency room visit. Um, so, you know, I think that we can bring solutions uh, when we go to these legislatures. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Olivia, we have another question from our classroom. Yeah. How would you recommend for students to start getting involved? For students to start getting involved? Yeah. Yeah, so um, joining events like this is a great way to get involved in our advocacy work. Also, um, both of our committees, PACE and AGR, we do recruit members each year. Um, that period just passed, but if you really are dying to join us this session, please feel free to shoot me an email and we can meet and discuss that further. Um, but really just joining our um, listservs, our email lists, checking our websites for events like this and to how to get um, educated on advocacy is the best way to begin. We also post a lot on our social media, um, reposting stuff from national. So if you don't follow the national NASW account, um, also check out that source. All right, I'm just checking the time. It is about 6.50, so we do have about 10 more minutes left. If there are any questions, please feel free to unmute.
Yes, Antoinette. Okay. Um, thanks. Again, this is um, a follow-up tagging on to Gerald Myers' his comment on the social determinants for health in terms of lack of insurance for people, um, lack of access to um, medical care in their communities. And um, I think perhaps, and I don't know if um, the AGR committee is already looking into it, but um, advocating to legislators for increased funding for social workers in primary care settings and in libraries, public libraries. Um, just, a, just a thought there. Absolutely. Thank you so much. The great thing about our committees is um, it's very diverse in terms of representation, in terms of social work practice itself. We have private practitioners, social workers working at state agencies, but then also in terms of geography, we have social workers from, I think, seven out of our nine divisions. Um, so that's almost each area throughout the state. So we have the rural, rural social workers represented. We have the social workers down on Long Island represented. Um, so if you're curious about any of our work, please feel free to shoot me an email and we can discuss this more. Olivia, we have another question from the classroom. Of course. Do members of the New York State NISW interact with members of the NASW from other states or are there other organizations that work together on like a, like with other states? Um, so we don't necessarily interact with other states um, unless the other state comes to us for support. Uh, but usually each state from NESW has their own autonomy over the legislation throughout their state. And we do just focus on our statewide legislation. So sometimes if there's um, a broad issue that our national office is taking a stance on, we may work with other state chapters around New York State, um, but it's not too often. Are there any other questions about anything that we discussed tonight? New York State lead, NASW New York State committees, either our PACE committee or our AGR committee or Capital Action Day? I think uh, since you had a minute, I put a little note in the uh, in the chat about social workers and their access to voters. And as all of you are working in field settings, um, if you don't feel comfortable being a voter educator, first of all, figure out why do you understand uh, how people get registered? Um, who's able to be registered, who's not able to be registered. Some of your clients may have challenges. Um, that's that's rock bottom civics. That's sort of at the base. And I think it's also gonna inform when you do that face to face with your legislator and you say, you know, there, there are a lot of voters in my area who, whatever it is we're talking about. Um, there's been a lot of discussion um, oh no, social workers aren't allowed to talk to people about voting. You're not allowed to politic in your agency, probably, but you can certainly talk to people about their civil rights. And uh, if you wouldn't know how somebody gets registered or you wouldn't know where they're allowed to vote or when they're allowed to vote, that's always a good quiz for yourself. So uh, that was my little commercial. And since we had a minute, I thought I'd plug that. I actually am um, am not working in an agency at this point, but I'm a volunteer with the League of Women Voters. So if you need nonpartisan information, um, it's a challenge to work nonpartisanly after being active with NASW, but it can be done. <laughs> and uh, there are tools out there if students need them. So thank you for the opportunity to make a pitch. Mm -hmm. 
Awesome. Thank you so much, Pat. Voting rights is, is crucial to our field. Um, I do just want to also put in there that we have additional resources on our home advocacy page. But if anyone has any additional resources, please send them to me and I'll get that posted on our website. Um, yes, Pat, Dr. Pat, Stanley. Oh, Pat, sorry. Pat reminded me of something. Um, so yeah, so there's the, I think there's the impression that uh, the NASW is pro-Democrat. Um, not every social worker is a Democrat, and we encourage diverse ideas. Um, and we we believe that, you know, together, no matter what your viewpoint is, we can understand each other and improve things together. So if you're a Republican social worker, don't feel shamed. Thank you for that, Gerald. I think Dr. Sandler was going to have a question. I saw your hand there. I, I just wanted to make a comment about voting, about voting. Nonpartisan voter registration is totally legal. And um, I am part of a group called Voting is Social Work.org. It's a national organization. I encourage everybody to go there. They have lots of resources that explain the rules about nonpartisan voting um, and everything you need to know, even to integrate it into your organizations, because we really think that um, it's important. So opportunity to empower our clients um, to go out, get registered and then vote. So check out votingissocialwork.org for all the resources you need. And I love that Pat is giving me a thumbs up. Awesome, thank you all for your questions and comments tonight. Before I let you go, I will be posting our registration link to join us for our event on September 19th with the Mental Health Association of New York State. Um, clearly you're interested in advocacy and policy work as a social worker, so please join us on September 19th to hear from Glenn Liebman and John Richter about their policy priorities and how we can get involved as social workers to accomplish our shared goals. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight. I hope you have a great rest of your evening. I'll put my email one more time into the chat box. Again, if you have any resources or any additional questions that you think of after this event, please feel free to always send me an email. Thank you so much. Have a great night. Bye.